you got your Bibles, turn with us to Matthew chapter 12 this morning. I want to read about uh, 12, 14 verses in this this morning. By the help of God, and we'll uh, get on into the message. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says this. It says, At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were and hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw, saw it, they said unto him, Behold, the disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did uh, when he was hungry and they that were with him? Uh, how he entered into the house of God and did eat uh, and the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat neither for them that were with him, but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, that's plural if you look at that, on the Sabbath days, uh, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. But now I say unto you uh, that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if they had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had uh, his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days uh, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, uh, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit uh, on the Sabbath day, will not lay hold upon it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, to ask you, Father, once again, God, to anoint, Lord, the Word, God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Ask you, God, to give us the thoughts, Lord, that you've given us this week, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray, God, for our families, Lord, and our children, Heavenly Father, Lord. We just pray and ask you, God, to touch in their lives, Father, and help them, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to walk with us, Heavenly Father, and help us, Lord, to do good, uh, Lord, in your sight, Father, and we'll praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look, at, let me read verse 12 once again. We'll take a text out of that. It says, How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Amen. When I begin to look at that in retrospect to what I just read over here. Now, they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in verse 1 uh, uh, and 2, they began to vilify uh, Jesus and, and tell him that he was doing wrong. It was against the law and what that they were doing. And then Jesus took the word of God uh, and went uh, over into it. And when he went over into the word of God, he said over there, and he gave reference to King David. And King David, uh, when his they were fleeing from uh, Saul during that time, um, they had been many days without food and they were hungry. And when they came to the temple over there, they went into the temple uh, and uh, uh, began to eat the showbread. Now the showbread was put there uh, uh, for an offering uh, to the priest. It was there so the priest would have bread and, and it was put out there and it was displayed uh, for them. And they, But it wasn't lawful for anyone else to eat it but the priest only. And uh, <clears throat> so they began to eat that uh, showbread over there. So in a sense, David broke the law uh, in that day and time and nothing was really said to him about it. Then it goes on to say uh, there in uh, verse 5, or it says, Have you not read that uh, in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple 
profane the Sabbath and are blameless. In other words, the work had to be done on the Sabbath day. That that they did. They did the wave offerings. They did the slaughtering of the animals. Uh, they uh, took the blood and they they separated it out and uh, and they done that work. It was a day of labor, really, for the priest and the people that were. Uh, involved uh, in the daily worship or on the Sabbath day worship, uh, it, it was a job. But yet there was no law prof uh, to profane, in other words, or they, they, according to them, they had not broken the law. And then here they are, they're taking Jesus because the, his disciples was pulling a year of corn once in a while and eating it, or it could be in a corn of wheat. Now, in the days of, that Jesus walked down here on this earth, the little tassels where the wheat would uh, would form in the top of it, that was called a corn of wheat. And, and they could have been a taking them that corn of wheat, just pulling it off, then rubbing it between their hands, then they'd, they'd blow the chaff away, then they would eat the little kernels of wheat uh, like that. And that that's possibly what it was. But then I don't know whether they had ears of corn like you and I have ears of corn today, or not over in the Holy Land, but it was it, the reference gave gives reference to corns of wheat uh, in the Word of God. When you begin to look that up concerning the word corn, uh, that it talks uh, uh, talks about there. And uh, but anyway, uh, as I thought about that and begin to look at that, I thought about you know uh, we as a people uh, we put emphasis on things that really doesn't matter. Uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of that day, they, uh, uh, and the, the religious authority in that day and time, uh, they were real adamant about keeping the laws, but yet they broke the law on every hand. Uh, they changed the laws to, to suit themselves, to make things easier. Uh, they did a whole lot of different things in that day and time. And uh, when Ezekiel uh, was prophet of God and during, the, during his time down here on the earth, uh, uh, the, the Lord took Ezekiel. You can find that uh, over, on over in the Word of, good, uh, Word of God after uh, he, uh, excuse me, uh, God showed him to wade out into the water, you know, to, to get to the point where that you were swimming. In other words, nothing but the head was shown. Uh, and, uh, but then a little bit later on, he said, he showed Ezekiel a hole in the wall and he told the man of God, he said, go over there and dig in, in that hole. And he went over and began to dig and behold, the Bible says that he found a door. And after he had uncovered the door, he told the word of God told Ezekiel, he said, open the door and go in. And he opened the door and what he did, he walked into the innermost uh, part of the religious, uh, people of that day and time, the people that took care of, of the, the sacrifices and done uh, the work of God and done all these things. And, uh, and Ezekiel beheld uh, some very ugly things. Let's just put it that way. It was an abomination, uh, the way that they were doing and how they were doing and how that they were profaning, in other words, or violating uh, uh, the laws of God. Amen. But yet then they wanted to push those same laws on the people out there and, and really be strict with them. Says so you do this or, you know, or, or we'll do whatever, you know, uh, to them. And when I thought about this, I thought about how that denominations today, denominations, you say, what is denominations? Well, there's uh, just for a few, I'm a Baptist. There's a Baptist. There's a wholeness. There's Presbyterian denomination. There's Church of God uh, denomination. There's Methodist. Uh, uh, they uh, free will uh, Baptist. They just you know that's five or six right there uh, uh, that I've brought out to you, and every one of them has doctrinal differences, Amen. And a lot of those doctrinal differences is is stuff that doesn't line up a lot of times with the Word of God. It's things that they put on you and things that they put out there that really is ceremonial. Uh, and the, some of those things that are cer ceremonial and everything, uh, my background is Church of God wholeness. Amen. Uh, some of the people in my family history and behind me 
Uh, back of this right here, they believe, you know, they, uh, a woman wasn't allowed to cut her hair. Uh, she wasn't allowed to wear a dress. The men wore long sleeve shirts buttoned up and, and everything like that. And, uh, you know, just, you know, there were so many things. There were certain foods they couldn't eat. They were certain drinks they couldn't drink, uh, and everything else. And they, uh, you know, what it was, it was, it was, it was a yoke that they had put upon their own neck. To try to do something uh, in the letter of the law, amen, that really didn't have anything to do with the grace of God and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ toward you and I today, amen. Now, you can't add nothing to John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, amen. You can't put in there, uh, well, you have to do this or you have to do that. You have to dress this certain direction or you have to follow us or you have to be baptized this way or sprinkled this way or uh, you have to uh, be able to speak tongues or do all of these things in order to be saved. All of that, friend, is works. It's all works. Amen. It's all, a lot of it, man-made doctrine. Yes, it's taken out of the word of God. But sometimes when you begin to take the word of God and you, uh, you take it through a carnal mind, you'll misinterpret, amen, what the spiritual application of the word of God is, amen. And the spiritual application is, uh, friend, that everyone come to know Jesus Christ. And he made it simple, the Bible says, that even a fool and a wayfaring man might not err in the way, amen. Jesus came into this world, friend, to give his life a ransom that you and I might be saved by the grace of God. And when Jesus began to lay it right back in the, the, uh, the religious uh, organization of that day and time, he laid it right back in their laps and everything. He said, look, you know, you're just as guilty as what you're accusing me of, amen. But you say that there's no fault in it, in what you do. But yet you put in fault on my men or my disciples, or my followers, and even I myself, Jesus, there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus ate also. Amen. That day when they was coming through there, they were hungry. And they did that. It was natural. Amen. They was walking through a, probably a field of wheat, uh, and they was reaching and getting the ripe, uh, the ripe uh, clusters of grain that's the top of it there. And like I said, you can take and roll it in your hands like that right there, and it busts the chaff off of it. You can blow the chaff away and it leaves the grains of wheat. Well, the grains of wheat have got a little bit of sweet taste to it and, and, and a nutty sweet taste, those grains of wheat do. Uh, you might, and, they're, and, and they're good to eat. Uh, raw wheat is good for you. It, it's good. It tastes is good and, and things like that. But let's move on just a second. Then he gets on over here and, he, and Jesus gives... Uh, 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 in verse 11, he says, And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you whom ye shall have, uh, who among you, excuse me, that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold of it and lift it out? What he done, he laid out a common sense scenario. I mean, if you've just got one sheep, and it falls into a pit and it's in danger. What are you going to do? Reach in there and get it and bring it out. That's the normal thing to do. Amen. Well, you and I, friend, uh, is, was that one sheep that was astray. And Jesus left the 90 and the 9, according to the word of God. And he went out and brought that one sheep back in. He got that one sheep. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, we were salvaged out of a pit, friend. Uh, God reached down into the mire clay, into the horrible pit. You can find that in the book of Psalms. And he set me on a solid rock. That, was, that rock was Jesus Christ. And he established my goings. Amen. So he, he laid out the scenario. Then he, verse 12, then he says, How much then is a man better than a sheep? If you're going to save your sheep, what about saving this man that's standing right here? So, I mean, he, he's laying it right back at him and everything. Friend, it's not all in ritual. It's not all in denomination. It's not all in uh, uh, the teachings of man, friend. 
the Bible, when you look at it and you look at it through spiritual eyes, what he's saying, uh, Jesus is saying, he said, you fellas are gagging in a gnat and swallowing a camel. You know, uh, the main thing was here that this man needed help and it was on the Sabbath day and the one that could help him was right there. So Jesus told him, he said, stretch out your hand. And when he stretched it out, it was made whole just like this other one. Amen. So he healed him that day. And then in verse 12, he says, uh, wherefore it is, now this is the words of Jesus, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. It's lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. In other words, what does it mean? If you, what does it mean to, for doing well? Uh, getting out here and maybe going and visit someone, talking to them about the Lord. Uh, it's uh, if you know someone's hungry, taking them a plate of food. Uh, if you know somebody that's having a problem or something like that there uh, and everything. And I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. If you know someone that has got a, a patch of tobacco, think about this. Now, not many people raise tobacco anymore. But years ago, people in the neighborhood would come together and they would help each other, put a patch of tobacco, cut it, and then put it in the barn and everything. And if you know it's coming a storm, and, 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 and this, you know, what's wrong with getting out there and helping this fellow? In other words, to do good, to give him a helping hand, uh, to help him and everything. Yes, I know. The law says you can't do that. But morally speaking, let me read you a verse of scripture. God showed me this one, uh, and it, I praise his wonderful name for this verse of scripture because it is a very special verse of scripture to me and a, a good friend of mine. Listen to what it says in verse uh, 22 of the book of Jude. Amen. Now, the book of Jude just has one verse, uh, one chapter in it, but there's 25 verses. And the book of Jude has got a lot in there. Uh, Jude was uh, one of the brothers of Jesus, half-brothers of Jesus. Now, listen to what it says in verse 22. And some having compassion making a difference. Amen. Anyone that's been saved by God's marvelous grace, amen, that knows that they're saved by God's marvelous grace, you say, can you know that, preacher? Yes, you can. You say, well, well, how do you know that? The Spirit will bear witness to you, uh, amen, through touching your heart and showing you uh, 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 how to live and what to think and how to think and, and, and speaks to you along the way, amen. Uh, you can know. The Bible says if you have not the Spirit of God, Romans chapter 8, uh, you're none of His. Amen. So when you do have the Spirit, when you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, uh, amen, the Spirit of God will make you a compassionate person. Some having compassion, making a difference. So what does that mean? People that are saved by God's marvelous grace that has compassion to go out and help someone another. And according to the way I read the word of God in Jesus' own tongue, uh, in the red writing in my book, he said, wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. It's lawful. Someone, you know, If someone's hurt, you don't just drive by and say, well, he's hurt, it's Sabbath, I can't even get him out of the road. No, what do you do? Uh, you pull over and you help. You do what you could do. Amen. Uh, you put forth an effort to, to do that. Amen. First Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 20. Uh, they was, uh, as I began to look into that verse of scripture there, and I've not got it marked, but it's in, in First Corinthians chapter 20. I'm going to flip over here in the back of my book, and I've got several places over here that I can go to right real quick. Uh but as I begin to think about uh, some of those things that a, a person does, listen, well, I'll find it here just in a minute, and everything, uh, you and I were bought with a price. We were bought with a price. Uh, uh, the price uh, was the uh, the... 
So praise God in the body and in the spirit, it says. And first Corinthians chapter 20. Let me find it real quick. I've got it wrote down here. Take me just a second. Amen. Well, maybe not. Maybe I didn't have it wrote down as good as I thought it did. But anyway, let's get into this. John 3, 16, and I've already quoted that to you, for God so loved the world. And Jesus come down here and paid a price. That price was he gave his life. Uh, amen. That, and, first, and 1 Corinthians 6, 20 talks about the price that he paid. He gave himself for you and I. Amen. And because he gave himself for you and I, amen, uh, he did what? That good work. The, the work that it, what? That brought salvation into this world. John 17, uh, down about verse 10 or 12, somewhere right along in there, uh, you'll find out that Jesus said over there, he said, Father, that work that you've given me to do, he said, I have done. Amen. In John 17, then he talks about uh, them that uh, was his and them that was the father's. He said, Father, you've given them to me. Uh, and I've given them to you. In other words, when Jesus, he turned right around and took you and I and, and purchased our salvation through his own blood, then he turned right around and gave us back to the Father to keep us. Amen. He said, Father, keep them that thou hast given me in thine own name. In John 17. Amen. So Jesus is doing good uh, in that in in that part there. And in... Uh, 902. Listen to what it says here in this one right here. As I begin to think about this here, you know, good works, good works, labor must take place uh, in the in the children of God's why? Why 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 do we have to have good works? And why do we have to labor? And what does it say over there? Let's go back to our scripture verse once again. And look at that. Listen to what it says. He said, Wherefore is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath? In other words, to do well means work or do something for the prophet, you know, to profit God. In other words, to, to promote the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in the eyes of the world, a lot of people think that a preacher don't work hard. Amen. But I'm telling you, friend, when you spend time uh, during the week agonizing in the Word of God, uh, praying, seeking God's face, looking for a message, uh, and, and sometimes it takes hours, not just a few minutes, sometimes it takes hours. Then when you get up here and you begin to labor and the power of the Holy Spirit of God begins to move on you, it takes a toll on your body. It's a labor of love. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you're getting paid. Well, I'm not. Uh, if you're paying your pastor and everything, friend, the Bible says that, uh, that the man of God is worthy of his heart. Amen. He's worthy of it. Why? Because he's laboring. It's a labor of love. Amen. So good works and labor must take place. If it doesn't take place, then no one gets saved by the grace of God. Why? Because Paul penned in another place over there, it's from faith unto faith. In other words, if if I just had met Chris and I was lost and undone and I was working maybe with him or something, but then I began to watch him and everything because he, he had took time to, to tell me about Jesus Christ and everything. Well, the first thing that I would do if I was a lost man, and most lost people do it, and I did it too, I would begin to watch that person and everything, and I'd begin to see just how much they uh, uh, believed in God, just how much of a Christian they was, just how, uh, 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 and everything. And then if I would watch him and his demeanor and, and the way that he conducted his life and the, those things like that there, and if I saw what I thought uh, would, was, was good works, amen, then I would think to myself, I, I would like to be like that. I would like to be that type of person. I would like to have that type of love down in my heart and soul, the love that he displays uh, to his fellow man, the love of God that keeps a smile on his face, the love of God that uh, that keeps him striving and working and going forward. Amen. Even when it's contrary to the flesh, and it is contrary to the flesh. To do the work of God, friend, 
You, the, the flesh don't want to do it. Why? Because the flesh wants to eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow it dies. Simple as that. Paul penned that uh, over in the book of 1 Corinthians. He said, if there is no resurrection, in other words, if Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, uh, he said, then our labor is in vain. He said, let us eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's what the flesh wants to do. That's what the devil uses on 99.9% .9 of the people out here in this world that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, friend. Uh, he, he, he puts you in places uh, that the flesh enjoys being there, regardless of what it is. The flesh enjoys being there. And because the flesh enjoys being there, they don't want no part of, of dying out to the world. They don't want no part of being separate from the world. Amen. They don't want no part of, of yielding their heart and life to Christ Jesus. They don't want no part of taking up their cross and following him. They don't want no part of being an example uh, before a lost and dying world. In other words, doing good. Amen. By the way, that's the name of the message, doing good. Amen. That's what God gave me when I began to look at that. Just doing good. And doing good, uh, uh, it's a multitude of things that you can do. It's not just preaching the word of God. It's not just being a Sunday school teacher. It's not just being a, a, a teacher down at the school uh, or something other else like that. It's not just being a policeman or a fireman. Uh, or a sanitation worker or, or anything else like that right there. Those jobs are good jobs. Amen. And, and they do stuff for people. Amen. In other words, there's a, there's a certain gratification if you do your job and do it well. Every once in a while, somebody will come along and say, I appreciate what you do. Even if we're picking up your trash. You know. Can you imagine what it would be if the sanitation workers went on uh, on strike for 30 days uh, all across the America? It wouldn't be long till uh, the United States would smell like a cesspool. Now that's simple as that. Uh, and, and contrary to what you think, a lot of people, I think they like the smell of a cesspool because of the way they're living out there in this world. But friend, it's not like that. Yeah, uh, amen. To do good for some to somebody means uh, you do it unselfishly, not for filthy lucre, not for money, not for these things that uh, that the world has got to offer, not for fortune and fame. All these things we do good, and when you do good for somebody without expecting anything back, you know what you're doing? You're laying up treasures in heaven. For moth and rust doeth not corrupt, and thieves don't break in to steal, friend. Amen. Those treasures will be awaiting on you if you're a child of God, friend. When you walk in them over the, on the other side, First Corinthians chapter three says over there that your works will be tried. As far you say, well, preacher, don't Ephesians chapter two verses eight and nine says it's by grace through faith, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes, it does. Amen. You cannot work your way into heaven, friend. You can't do good enough to get to heaven. The first good work that you need to do before any, anything else that you are able to do for God is to believe and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul. For God so loved you, friend, that he gave his son, Jesus, to die on Calvary that if you would believe that he was the son of God and he died for your sins, you could be saved by God's marvelous grace. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Uh, friend, uh, believing and trusting in Jesus. And when that takes place in your life, then you start doing good. You say, how do I start doing good? Well, first of all, you turn from your wicked ways and you walk according to the word of God. You begin to read and study. Second uh, Timothy two fifteen talks about a workman over there. He said, "A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth." Amen. Uh, he said, "Study." In the first part of that, he said, "Study to show yourself approved unto God." In other words, how can you how can you do good till you learn how to do good? Amen. Now 
You do evil because you're born with that in you. And you know how to do evil. Just as soon as you get old enough to walk and start talking a little bit, friend, uh, you'll do wrong. And you'll lie about it. Why? Because it's self-preservation that's built into every human being down here on this earth. Amen. Uh, we're all, all, a double L, friend, all separated by the uh, the sin that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden of God. We're separated from the Lord God. Amen. Till Jesus reunites us through the salvation that he salvages you out of the cesspool of the world and sets your feet upon a solid rock. I quoted the scripture in Psalms a while ago and talked about he brought you up out of the horrible pit and, and, and out of the miry clay. Amen. That horrible pit, friend, if you want to read about it, go over and read Luke chapter 16. Uh, amen. It'll tell you just exactly where the pit that you're being brought up out of. But Ephesians 2 8 says, By grace, not of works, least any man should boast. Matthew 5 16 uh, it tells us over there, he said, to let our light shine. What? What does that mean? Do good. Let it just shine. Let people see you. Stick your foot out there in front and somebody else is, whoops, I'm sorry. Oh, did I happen to tell you about a man called Jesus? You know, interrupt their life just for a moment and let them see who Jesus is, why Jesus came. And what he come for, friend, was so that everyone would have an opportunity uh, to be saved by God's marvelous grace. Everyone, amen, would have that same, that same thing. Not by works, least any man should boast. So when we let our light shine, amen, then we'll find out in James chapter 2, verse 17, uh, uh, faith and works, faith and works. Let's talk about faith and works just a minute. Well, there's such a thing as dead works. You know, what? what is dead works? Amen. Dead works is uh, somebody that has never known the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're out here trying to do good things for people. Uh, what it is, they've hinged their faith in, in their own ability to work their way into heaven. And it's an impossibility. Go back to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. He said, by grace, through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. But James is uh, making a comparison to works over there. And, and when he begins to make that comparison, he talks about uh, uh, dead works, and, and where then he talks about living faith, uh, and then uh, uh, is, re is revealed by work. Now, he said, James said over there, he said, uh, show me your faith, and I'll show you works. And he said, show me your works, and I'll show you faith. Amen. Faith and works goes hand in hand. You cannot separate it. But now there is dead works. Uh, dead works is something other that uh, that Matthew chapter 7, I believe it is, talks about over there, those that come up uh, uh, in, during, after the sheep and the goats have been separated. And then he said there'll be those that uh, uh, there that would say, Lord, Lord, look what we've done in thy name. Have we not prophesied? That means preach. Uh, have we not done many mighty works? That means uh, to uh, uh, do miracle things like that right there. Have we not uh, done all, all of these things? And then they hear this sad word, that sad word, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. All he had was dead works. Dead works, friend, will get you an honorable mention at your funeral. What it'll do. Well, here's John Brown. He was a faithful member of the Third National uh, Baptist Church down here. Uh, and, and, and he never missed a Sunday. Uh, he taught Sunday school. Uh, he drove the bus and everything. He was the, uh, the, the person that took care of everything. He was a deacon uh, and all of that. No word did I say that the man was saved by the grace of God. All of that is works. All of that effort that this man put into uh, uh, to uh, winning heaven down in the end went to waste. If he had just asked Jesus Christ to start with, 
to come into his heart and save him when God sent forth the Holy Spirit down to his heart. And so did you realize, uh, listen to me, lost church member. And I said, lost church member. Everybody that's a member of a church friend is not going to heaven. Simple as that. You have to be saved by the grace of God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way you can be saved is to, is to be begotten by the word, drawn by the spirit, and ask him to come into your heart. Revelations 3.20, he's standing at your door, friend, and he's knocking. He's knocking why? Because he wants in. That's the reason why he's wanting in. He will not open the door and force his way into your heart. No matter what you do down here in this world, friend, he's not going to force his way in. And when you're laying there in the last few breaths is leaving your body, friend, listen to me. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, no matter what your position in this world was, in hell, you'll open up your eyes. Simple as that. In hell, you'll open up your eyes. And you will hear those words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So there's such a thing as dead works. Dead works will get you an honorable mention down here in this world. That's it. Nothing else gets you an honorable mention. But faith in Christ Jesus and good works will not only get you into heaven, but it'll have some rewards awaiting for you when you get over there on the other side. Amen. And those good works that you do will go through the fire of God's word, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and they'll be either gold, silver, or precious stone. Now, there's some wood, hay, and stubble over there. That's where the people uh, works and everything. That's like if I go to Brother Chris over there and say, Chris, you know, I was praying the other night, and God said, give you $100. All right. That's good, and that's good, and that, you know, that works real fine. But then the Christians are standing there talking to other three other people and everything. And I walk up and then pull out and said, God give, told me to give you a hundred dollars, Chris. Here it is. I got my reward right then. That's dead works. That's works that that it's wood, hay, and stubble. Amen. That's Pharisaic works. The Pharisees in Jesus' day over there. They would uh, disfigure them, their face and, and, and probably rub a little dirt around their eyes or something like that. And they would look. They had the appearance of fasting when they had just got up from a table full of food. Amen. They put bells around the hems of their garments. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, so that they would be noticed out there in the street. Hey, look at me. I'm a member of the Sanhedrin. Hey, look at me. I'm this. Hey, look at me. I'm this. And, and everybody that come by and they'd reach up and they'd pat them on the back. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I would rather be talked about like a dog down here in this world and do the will of God and have something waiting for me over there on the other side. And friend, I tell you, if you preach the word of God, uh, people ain't going to think a whole lot about you sometimes. They're not. But if you're a child of God and you're listening and you know the truth when you hear the truth, Amen. And you pray for the man of God, that's good works. That's good works. You'll get, did you know that a prior warrior would, uh, is going to be, uh, people that gets a, a crown for that and, 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 and things like that? Because if you're a prior warrior and you're praying for me and, and the, the word of God that I preach, somebody gets saved by God's marvelous grace. Guess what? You've got a part of that, friend. You've got a part of it. Amen. See, God doesn't leave people out that praise for the man of God or people that praise for a missionary uh, or people that gives money uh, to help missions and things like that right there and, and to support one another and to just, just to have a compassionate heart to do good, to do good. I say all the time that God made me a servant down here in this world. It took me a good while to figure that out. But that's what God made me. He made me a servant. God gave me a compassionate heart. I can't watch a touching commercial on TV without tears running down my face. And yes, I cried when old Yeller died. Uh, amen. Why? Because my heart was so tender before gone. Amen. Think about this. Think about this, friend, and I'm a hushing. Amen. When you do good, 
Amen. Just like Jesus said there, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. Ain't nothing wrong with it, friend. Don't look around and say, well, I'll, I, I, I'd, I'd come to help you, but today's Sunday and I don't work on Sunday. You need to rethink your way of thinking, friend. Somebody calls you on Sunday and everything like that right there and say, I need some help. I've run out of gas. My car, I've got a flat. I don't have a spire. Can you come and help me? And everything. Well, it's Sunday and it's, it's the Sabbath day and I don't work on Sunday and everything. And I don't want to break the laws of God. Friend, the law of God will get you an honorable mention down here on this earth. That's what it'll get you. There ain't no salvation in the law. The law brings you to the knowledge of sin. My friend, if you turn away someone that's in need, amen, without helping them, then you, if you've got the Holy Spirit of God down in your heart, you better do a little bit of looking in the mirror and say, what's that I'm feeling down in my heart and soul? Because it's probably shame. It's probably shame. You'll be ashamed of yourself, friend, if you turn them away. That's the message God's laid on our heart today. I appreciate that. Doing good. Doing good. Well, what a, uh, uh, what, what a good thing. If everybody on the United States and in the world would just do good, we wouldn't have no need of a law enforcement. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have no wars. Uh, you know, you'd say, well, you're talking about heaven. You got it, friend. How can you be a do-gooder? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.